You're listening to The Cyclone on J360 Radio. With your hosts, Dev and Al. Jay has entered The Cyclone. Hello, J360 Legion, and welcome to The Cyclone, episode 13. And the first part of the Cyclone Double Speed... And the first part of the Cyclone Double Special this week. Ah, we got a lot to cover. As a matter of fact, we're in that transitional period. Soon enough, it's going to be football taking center stage and basketball sitting on second base. And the way we go about doing this, we don't lose our basketball fans either. Since the double special is happening this week, that's why this particular episode of the Cyclone is taking the J-Man Showtime slot today. And of course, I'm working on the YouTube channel, so... After a while, when I'm done doing all this rebranding and restructuring, we can get things back to abnormal as possible. You know what I'm saying? Because things in J360 are never normal. But going back into the sports phase, let's see what the other members of the Cyclone crew have for us. What's up, Al and Dev? So I don't see San Antonio getting better. They haven't gotten better, in my opinion. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. who, did they, who did they pick as of late? I know Kawhi is... is they, lost, they, they lost Jonathan Simmons to my team. Okay. He ended up sounding in Orlando. Right. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge is not what he cracked up to be. Um, he like he wasn't... They expected this guy to, you know, be the successor to Tim Duncan, and he hasn't lived up to the hype. And he's always a liability defensively, and it shows. Pau Gasol's washed. Tony Parker's washed. Kawhi Leonard's their best player. And, and Rudy Gay's coming off an injury, so we don't know how good he's going to be. So you got to think, where the heck San Antonio getting a, another star to kind of play with Kawhi, unless Marcus Aldridge reinvents himself. Well, but rumors, rumor has it he's not happy, he's disgruntled, and he wants out. Really? And Yeah. He wants apparently. to leave. Yeah. What is it with these top stars wanting to leave their uh, team? It's, Listen, I was a fan of LaMarcus in Portland. I loved his game. He was a 2010 guy. But when Damian Lillard start de- started to get better, he started to get unhappy and he left Portland. And now he went to San Antonio to be the guy, and Kawhi Leonard kept getting better. And when it was LaMarcus take us there, couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Okay, so pretty much better he wants Lamar- to leave because he wants to be the face. Yeah, but he... He has to realize, yo, dude, you're not as good as you thought you were. You you got to realize that because when when Kawhi went down, it was all on you. You didn't have amazing performances. Yes. Statistic-wise, you didn't take the game over. You weren't a huge presence. You just got to realize, yo, you're not that. You're not the guy who you thought you were. Yeah. Like, you you kind of got to face the music. You, you're pretty much, don't pull a Dwight Howard. Just don't. Don't think you're better than what you think you are, and, and you want this, you know, spotlight of the number one. Um, I want to be the number one option on a terrible team, and, and end up on terrible teams and collecting a check. So, I'm just saying, Lamarcus, I, I would say, hey, you know, try to reinvent yourself, get better, um, stay in your role, and just get get better in the role you have. I don't think leaving sin. Cause you're not gonna you're not gonna play for a better team besides San Antonio the rest not of your career. All. I can guarantee that. Especially not at, not at the not, not at the role he's at now. Or especially how much money he's getting in. Exactly, because so, he's sounding like a five year deal. Yeah, I gotta see that one all the way through. <laughs> that's what I would do. Exactly. I would just totally collect. That's money what I'm up. saying. Like I wouldn't Dude. I wouldn't be trying to get traded because you're not gonna get spent anywhere good. Nah. And even all. and even then he's gonna be on that bench, so because they're gonna give on uh, somebody else that's more accurate, got the um young factor mm-hmm. to grow into. They're gonna give him the playtime. So Exactly. Yeah, I don't so know. So I'm not I'm not I'm I would kinda what do you think of what I'm doing? Yeah, just chill out, keep those checks coming in, and find something else to and invest in. Something, because I don't see Lady San Antonio as a good option. I'm just saying. Speaking of basketball, you know, with Kyrie Irving wanting out, was this all part of LeBron's plan? Because why, why would you say no trade if you know this is going to fall apart? Why would he do that now? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Why is that, Dev? I mean, listen, it could be a conspiracy. We've all heard it before. Oh, LeBron's just plotting to get his way out of Cleveland again. We hear it all the time. But, no, you know, that's not what I'm thinking. Okay, so what's your theory on this? Derrick Rose initially wanted out. Even When LeBron first joined, apparently, Kyrie wanted out. Because Kyrie wants to be the number one guy. Well, he was going to be his number one. We all know D. Rose is the player he used to be. Oh, yeah, because he signed up? No, Derrick Rose is a nice stopgap player. Yeah, he's the guy you get that to. You get the guy you actually like. Now, think about this. How many first-round picks or how much future are the Cavs going to do by train Kyrie Irving? Well, considering the market, like, Paul George got traded for some bubble gum and duct tape. So, I mean, it depends on what the... Well, hold on. we got to remember, there's no actual GM. No, they hired somebody. Who did they hire? I didn't hear about that. I did hear about it. Yeah, they hired a GM. Who's they hired? Kobe Altman. Never heard of him. I don't know. Maybe you should. Does he even have a track record? I never heard of him either. So he, there's a no-name guy on the phone for the cat. Okay. This. Oh, he worked for the Cavs before. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll see how this works out. Now it's to the point that LeBron sabotages just for absolutely no reason. Well, hold on. That's not his fault. If the team goes like down, he's like, the one who goes... leaked the Kyrie Irving trade rumors. He? How did he leak it? He's the one who told the press in an interview, or he just like just like, oh, I'm gonna leak this on purpose. Like one of those type of moves? I don't know. That's what I heard. To me, it's like, this is interesting to me. There has to be a bigger plan in place. LeBron is thinking of something. Like, LeBron has a no-trade clause? I just thought his contract was up. Uh, no. Yeah, it's up next year. But he immediately yeah. said he will not be traded for this year. Do you think he's just going to sit on a losing cast team for the rest of the year? They're I, not I don't gonna know. They're going to win 60 games. They're just not going to win the finals. They lost a lot of pieces. They No, LeBron's thinking of something. I'm telling you, who's going to challenge them in the East? Who? The Bucks. If they take a step forward, maybe. But they had to take a step forward, and we don't know that. Well, we're going to get a healthy Jabari. We're going to get a healthy Middleton. They're going to take a big step forward. And then you got a one-year experience Thon Maker who's been making a lot of... He's been doing better than what I thought he was going to do in his rookie year. True. But I, I don't see anybody challenging them for in getting to the finals and actually doing a whole lot. I don't see the Bucks really challenging them. They might go six games at best. And I get, I'm like, I don't see that happening. Because right other now, the way the team's... Other than LeBron, other than LeBron, who's going to block Giannis? You think Tristan Thompson could take him? No. No, but listen, LeBron is all you really need to kind of be in. When when has LeBron but also think of this now that our team and not make the playoffs? But now think of this with Kyrie Irving likely to be traded, and yes, it's gonna get done. I saw some sources that said, yeah, this trade will be done. Why right after Kyrie announces it, LeBron refuses to be traded? Um, do you think? Do you think there was some type of clash of egos between the two players? Well, Kyrie Irving. Listing off his picks of where he wants to go, he doesn't sound like he has his head on his shoulders of where is his best fit. He's one of those choices of the Knicks. James Dolan Nick. He's reminding me of Stephon Marbury a lot. That was dumb. What? That was dumb. Hey, Stephon Marbury was good, but he sabotaged his own career. Exactly. The difference between him and Kyrie is Kyrie has a ring, and Kyrie's a better offensive player. He got a ring because of LeBron. Exactly. So why would you leave that? Unless you know LeBron's not staying. That's the only reason I'm leaving. If I'm Kyrie Irving and I know LeBron's not staying after the year, I'm getting a trade too. Why do the trade now? That's because you don't want to wait around for LeBron. Anybody, look at the track record. Anybody who's waited around for LeBron gets the short end of the stick. Oh, you mean Mo Williams? Yeah, Mo Williams, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bott. Like, no, you leave LeBron before he leaves you. You know that if you leave now, you have a better shot at going somewhere and, and being better and then the Cavs can get whatever they need to get and go in rebuild mode after LeBron leaves him. Because he's not staying. That team was built for win now, and now their window's closing. Well, they had a future, and LeBron threw it all away when he came back. They traded all the assets that they had. You yes. know what LeBron reminds me of? The okay, aliens from... Do you say, okay, you have a nice... You have a pretty nice young team that you sucked for four years to get and lebron james is knocking at your doorstep and say hey i want to sign here do you do you say no who says no to that i'm not no, saying no to that i i wouldn't have traded andrew wiggins though i still think that was a mis- i wouldn't have either but like i said that was the gm's call listen if they kept andrew wiggins they would have been in better shape long term but look at andrew wiggins now as far as his career he doesn't have the it factor to take over games he, Carl I, I, towns has it jimmy butler has it wiggins is just a really good scorer 
Well, the problem is with Minnesota, like, I don't know what Minnesota's deal is. And I actually figured the Timberwolves would have hit the playoffs by now, and they haven't yet. Can you explain to me what's going on with that? Just to be honest, it's a tough Western Conference. We have a lot of young guys. Even though you had two back-to-back rookie of the years, Tibbs is the defense first guy. And it takes a while for Tibbs' teams to kind of buy into a system because they got to know what he wants. And that's not going to be an easy turnaround. You just don't throw the coach in there. This is not the Golden State Warriors, right, where the team's already developed. Like, Flip Saunders didn't get time to de- de- develop this team like Mark Jackson did. Mark Jackson built that team. Steve Kerr took him to the next level. Due to f- the late Flip Saunders dying early, he was just still putting his team together. He didn't get time to grow the team. Because if that would have happened the way it's supposed to, Flip got time to grow the team. And then Tips would have just stepped in and did his thing and took him to the next level. But Tips is still growing the team. Andrew Wiggins still doesn't have a three-point shot. They traded Chris Dunn after a year, so either that's a red flag. I'm saying this might be a red flag there because any guy traded after one year after either having a good season or not so good season, you might want to watch out. Remember what happened to Michael Carter-Williams? A great year in Philly, gets traded after he won a rookie of the year. But yeah, Dunn to Milwaukee, get... and I never saw anything in him. Yeah, so Chris Dunn, you kind of got to see what the guy's made out of now. So either, you know, Minnesota was just trying to win now, or and the guy was actually good, or he wasn't that good, and they wasted a top five pick on him. But I said all that to say this, that Minnesota has had a lot of growing up to do, and outside of Carl Anthony Towns, who was a sure superstar Wiggins was just a great scorer Levine needed to stay healthy to make a true impact and done the jewelry was still out on him we don't really know what he's going to be he was supposed to be the answer there at point guard but he never beat out Rubio for minutes but then again Tibbs is partial to rookies he doesn't like to play them so it's kind of hard to judge what was wrong there with all those factors being thrown in because it's not like that group was together very long before they blew it up. Well, didn't they also trade Zach Levine? Yep. And I'm a, I'm a fan of Zach Levine, personally. Like, I like him. I hope he bounces back from that ACL injury in Chicago and um has a re- and has a breakout season. Gets, like, most improved or something like that. Yeah, and Butler now is on the Warriors, right? I mean, on the, on the Timberwolves. Yep. So, pretty much, Minnesota's in the wood now mode. They're putting all their chips to the forefront and say, hey... We're going to go out and get this thing now, which I think is a bad idea because Golden State is at their peak. Like, they're not going to, and they're locked up for a long term, too, which is scary. Oh, my God. Okay. So, all right. So, pretty much the Cavs are all, it looks like, I feel like the writing's on the wall with this team. They know they're not built for the long haul. They can't beat the best team in basketball right now. Like, Like, this past year, they've, they're facing mortality, whereas in the year before, they were on a high horse. And it's like when players see the writing on the wall, they're like, hey, let's get out of here before you're stuck on a terrible team. And the owner wants to switch things up, get rid of players, and then you're shipped off somewhere you don't want to go. Try to get your trade, your best trade value now. I know. But, or – or stay on a very bad team to the next LeBron James comes along, and that's not going to happen for, like, a long time. 25 years. Okay, so let's look at this this way, right? The draft does not bring you instant stardom. And, let, and it happens once every, like, what, 10 to 15 years or once every general. There's, there's not too many transcendent players that come straight out of college. Because let's be real. College basketball doesn't develop these guys. They they don't. Like, they may improve on a couple things here and there, but the overall player, they don't really develop in college. So you get unfinished products that you kind of have to finish grooming yourself. Where if you're in the right system, do the right things. Like Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard was not a finished product coming out of San Diego State. Um, Paul George wasn't a finished product. Jimmy Butler wasn't a finished product. Giannis um, sure as even, hell. Was. Yeah, Giannis was hella. He's super raw coming out of Greece. Like, guys are finished products coming out the draft. So, you can't rely on the draft and hope everything happens. Look what Philly's doing. I feel like Philly's players are getting injured on purpose so they can work on their game for a year or two and be ready by the time they're actually healthy. I know, but then I. I, I oh, man. We have a Sixers fan on right now. Uh, tell, listen, dude. Just tell the truth. 
I'm busy working on stuff, so go on ahead. I always hear about trust the process, but what's the point of the process when no one can stay on the court? And secondly, what's the point of the trust the process by the time like all these players are ready to go? They'll finally start their first season together. Like, I've been asking the, that for quite some time. The okay. Sixers are the Sixers are acting like they're the Harlem Glo- um, Globetrotters right now. No, no, once. that that's the Knicks, son. Get it right. The Knicks are the circus. Uh, trust me. <clears throat> but my thing is, the problem with Philadelphia, and this is the biggest problem. This is the problem I had from the very beginning. You're putting all your eggs in hoping this Joel B turns out to be a superstar that's durable, and as a seven foot guy. And the, the track record with most of these guys, that's never good. They don't last long. Seven Big guys at seven feet with feet pro, with feet, foot injuries or knee problems, they don't last long in the league. I hope the guy has a good bill of health. I really does. I hope he has a sensational season this year. But history shows us he doesn't last long. Look at Yao Ming. Look at, you know, look at all this. Like, look at, look seven, at Greg look at Oden. Footer. Yeah, Greg Oden. Um, you know, who's, Mari Stoudemire. Who was that guy that the Sixers traded for back in the day? Um, What's his name? Not Matumbo. Um, um, Keith not, Van Horn. No, not that. It was somebody else. Uh, the Lakers had him for a while. Then he was traded to the Sixers, and he was such a flop, and it literally set the Sixers back years. What was his name? Andrew Bynum? You mean Elton Brand? Elton no. Brand and Andrew Bynum. Both of them. I, Bynum. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like Kel Folks look good before the ankle injury. Like, and mind you, this is a point guard heavy draft. What is it? Uh, the kid from Sacramento, uh, De'Aaron Fox looks amazing. He's quick as ever. Like a lot of these guards look. Jason Tatum looks great. Like a lot of these guys look good in summer league, right? So far, this looks like it'd be a very deep draft. But look at the gap. Two thousand three, and this two thousand seventeen draft turns out to be as good as two thousand three minus LeBron, then look how big of a gap that is. Like, years-wise. Like, well, the problem is, players. I stand by this. They need to expand the NBA D-League more, not to say, oh, yeah, we have a D-League for the sake of having a D-League. Well, think about it like this. The, the Everything that you get, and this is actually true stories, when you look at the NBA... You get great training, great training staff, a coach who's not under the hot seat and just trying to win games and playing the right players and guys that are actually trying to develop you depending on what team you go to. It's not all teams are like that, right? In the D-League, you'll be lucky if there's a trainer there. You know what I'm saying? Like That's the reason why I'm saying they should expand that. The, the, the NBA needs to treat their D-League like the minor league uh, system in baseball. They should, and we talked about this plenty of times. We've been, we, me and you on the cyclone have been lobbying about this for well, episodes no, we, now. We initially was complaining about the NFL, but um, well, it was the NFL thing that segued. Hey, the NBA should follow, you know, what the MLB is doing because the MLB has the best blueprint for this, as far as a development league where it worked. Yeah, well. Plus, they have like ninety teams. Like, I mean, every t- what? How many? How many like freaking um, minor leagues does baseball have? They have the A, they have the Double A, and the Triple A, right? Yeah, they have. Trust me, they have a bunch, and you gotta work through the ranks and get better. And it's very possible. And they have you know good training staffs and all that stuff. But with basketball, it's a different thing. A lot of guys leave you know college for. The pros, and some of them end up in the D League. And guess what? I'd rather stay that extra year in college with a better training staff, people who want to see you get better, even though it's a different game, and maybe end up playing overseas than choosing the D League over college. And honestly, college is better from all those aspects. The only difference between the D League and college, they pay you in the D League a teacher's salary, and if you tear your knee up, you better pray there's a trainer there, or that's it. You're done. Well, the pretty much, yeah. Um, there's not many good D League successors other than maybe Jeremy Lin, Jonathan Simmons. Yeah, I mean, who's also, playing for my Magic, by the way? 
just there is hope. I my I was thinking about renouncing my fandom, but I'm putting all my hopes in Jonathan Simmons, a player I actually like on the team. And we're gonna see where this goes. Well, didn't Gary Payton play in the D League for a little bit? Um the D well, this D League hasn't really been around that long since Gary Payton. I know his son played in the D League. Yeah, he's on the Bucks now. Yeah, his son was in a D League. He, I think, he did four years at Oregon State. But mind you, the D League can has developed some decent, solid players. But nobody's turned into a star coming from the D League. Maybe besides Jeremy Lin, and the most recent guy coming from the D League to actually make some success is Jonathan Simmons, and he was in the Spurs, which has a great system from top to bottom. Like if you go to Miami, the this, what is it? The Sky, the, whatever the heck the D League name is in Miami, they have a great farming system. There are very few teams that have a great farming system, where the training staff down in the D League, all the way up to the actual varsity team, to the owner, are on the same page, and actually care about winning basketball games in order to make money. Whereas you got there's like there's three tiers of NBA teams, right? We got the NBA teams that want to win, have a great farming system, and they want to make money by winning basketball games. The Golden States, the Miami Heats, uh, the Heat, the San Antonio Spurs, and you know a couple other teams. And then you have the let's just make the playoffs and be relevant type of teams. Those are your uh, Toronto Raptors, your Atlanta Hawks, right? Then you have the we're going to make money anyway, and we don't care about basketball. Your Knicks, your Sacramento Kings, and your Pelicans, and et cetera, et cetera. So unless you fall in that top tier that cares about winning basketball, the D-League team is going to be trash. It's going to be terrible. And unless they expand it, like you said earlier, we're going to keep getting these type of products coming out of college. And that's exactly. why the Cavs shouldn't depend on the draft, because getting another LeBron James or a immediate impact player doesn't happen often because you end up with guys like Derek Williams out of Arizona who got really good but never was worth the number two overall pick or you get your Anthony Bennett pretty good guy at a UNLV but not the number one overall pick but but you know it's weird it's weird the, the NBA is uh, draft is pretty much crap shoot because who would ever expect Gilbert Arenas to be as dominant as he was when he played and what was he a second round pick I could have sworn yep, he was he was he went second round but so, that's the son, thing. You you can't really say how guys are going. Like, who thought Jamon Green was going to be this good? Kind of did. I saw the potential. Everybody sees potential. Like, listen, every year you always see that player. It's like, oh, he has potential to be this. He has potential to be that. But depending on his work ethic, the organization, and the system, guys either pan out or they don't. Yeah, of course, what do I know? I thought Marcus Smart was going to be better than Jabari Parker. So what do I know? <laughs> I mean, listen, what do, what does any of us know? A lot of people thought Darko Milicic was going to be decent. And look what the, what the hell happened there. People thought, oh, Andrew Bynum's going to be the next injury prone. Still got two championships, but injury prone. I thought Salim Stoudemire out of Arizona was going to do good, and he was just never there mentally to be able to play basketball. The guy was actually really good. Like, he was a 6'1 guard, but he was too undersized, but he could shoot lights out. I'm pretty sure he would be really good in today's NBA. But we should wrap this up for the NBA news tonight, um, because I do want to cover some NFL. Avs are going nowhere. The draft is a 50-50, and by the time they get too good, it's not going to be any good. And we don't know what Minnesota is going to do, but they're cashing it all in now, and that's pretty much what we got so far. Oh, you want to discuss football, huh, Al? You want to talk about the foosball, huh? Well, guess what? It is not going to happen in this episode. Come back in for tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, since we're doing a double special this week. You're going to get your football episode nice and ready for you by tomorrow afternoon. I would like to thank everybody who has supported the Cyclones so far. Thank you. And I would also like to say that we won't let you down with our football coverage because that's going to be just as crazy as the basketball coverage was. And who knows, maybe we'll try to squeeze baseball in there too. But outside of all that, though, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank every single one of you for participating with us. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. On behalf of the Cyclone crew, this is Jay signing off. Laters.